morning everyone. I'm feeling really thoughtful today um, and I thought I'd share some of my thoughts with you because they just uh, I feel like they need a platform. I'm having one of those mornings where I feel like I want to have a, I'm having conversations with people in my head <laughs> and uh, that's a a sign that I need to get out of the house and b um, it's making me feel like sharing it with you. So yeah, I, I think it came from, um, I'm reading um, Thich Nhat Hanh's book called How to Walk at the moment, and he he just has a, a page of very um, short descriptions or, or short sort of um, ideas about how to focus when you're walking and, and the intention. Um, for walking practice, walking meditation, and one of them has really stuck with me, and that he says, "You are walking for all beings, or walk, walk for everyone, walk for everyone who you know." And he also said that you are walking for all your ancestors, all your loved ones that have passed away, uh, and all the future beings. You're walking for the whole of the universe, so that the peace and um, serenity and, and love that you imprint on the earth when you're walking has an effect on everyone on every level of being. And I just found that so powerful uh, an idea that it started me thinking that. Yeah, everything we do, all intention and all um, thought, our way of being and living, reverberates. You know, all in all directions, and we we tend to think of our actions and the way we live as affecting us immediately and um, those around us. I guess those in our close knit community, our families or friends and. Um, but you do forget about the impact it has on your ancestors um, and those future family members or friends or the rest of the world. So this idea that we are connected um, universally to the collective collective consciousness to this higher um, plane is really, it's just sort of buzzing away in my head <laughs> and making me think about how I'm acting every day. And it made me think, how would I um, communicate this to someone who, who might not know about the this way of thinking, or a yoga philosophy, or yoga perspective, um, Buddhist perspective, and I was thinking of, you know, the using the intellectual brain to think about it, and that, you know, science tells us um, and backs up a lot of um, the, these philosophies that everything is vibration, so. Everything is vibration. All the atoms that create us uh, and create everything, not even atoms, I mean, at, at subatomic level, at a quantum level, everything is humming and vibrating. And, and we know that you can have an effect on vibration, right? You can have good vibrations. You can have bad vibrations, you can have dull vibrations, slow vibrations, low vibrations. Um, you can have like shrill, um, really active, um, high vibrations. Um, it, there's all the vibrations that you can imagine reflect our feelings and our thoughts and our experience of the world, right? And we can have an impact on them. So you know that when you um, 
say you stick your foot in the water, you watch the ripples change and vibrate differently to how they were previously. Even if there's a, a, a movement in the water already, you're creating a different, you're impacting on the rest of it. So, you know, at that gross level, you're making a difference. So if you're making a difference on the gross level and all of our uh, levels of being are connected, then surely those ripples are also changing on the other levels, on the subtle level of existence and then on the um, causal level of existence, on our higher, most highest level. So that, re that idea refers to the um, uh, koshas, um, in yoga philosophy, so in, in Vedanta, Vedanta and Samkhya kind of yoga, I think. <laughs> I always get those mixed up. So all these levels of our being are connected. We are connected to everything that's ever existed and ever will exist. Um, and we are all vibrations, so we can change everything we can change everything that is happening to us and we can influence everything that we experience so if we bring it right back to our experience our thoughts are vibrations and our thought vibrations if we choose can be really beautiful and peaceful they can be full of love um, and goodwill and and that then creates the experience of love and peace around us we start to notice that our life um, falls into rhythm with those vibrations so what happens when we have just jaggy thoughts when they're all intense and when they're all fighting for space in the head when they're all um, when they're all vibrating to the tune of negative experience and historical experience, things that have happened in the past, um, things that you're worried about for the future. What happens when we're vibrating on that level all the time? When that's a constant background tune that we're playing and we're sending out into the world around us. Does that affect everyone around us and everything around us? And does that then bounce back to us? So, yeah, I'm interested that you have such control or you have such power over your experience. You are the center of your, of your universe. You are the center of the universe and you are able to send out the vibrations that you choose and then I just flicked open the Hatha Yoga Pradipika and I was reading about um, the worship of Shivalingam and that so I I pulled a card about Shivalingam this morning and then I flicked open this huge book to the same page so and it, it seems to be resonating with what I'm thinking as well so it says um, yeah maybe after some time scientists will discover that man's body and his evolution man's nature and its transformation man's consciousness and its awakening are not influenced by external social factors such as religion politics ethics and morality but they are manifested from somewhere within you. And that somewhere is the Shiva in you, the consciousness. The finest matter in you. Um, yeah, and then it, it goes on to say if you want to get out of this level of consciousness in which you are confined, then you have to use some means which will have a direct effect on the inner force. That inner force is called Shiva. So we have to act in a way that um, that helps our conscious state to 
to vibrate positively, to vibrate in a way, in a way that we want to live um, in every single moment. And this is the practice, just keep coming back every moment to, um, to what's going on inside and to what's going on outside. Take everything as a reflection of what is happening. Um, uh, uh, take everything as a reflection of um, what is coming from you, what you're emanating. And in that way, you see so many beautiful um, experiences. You see your experience with the world around you as being completely interlinked. And also, it doesn't feel great then when there's negative um, experience. But we have to realise that those are all part of our being. So, yes, keeping coming back to the practice every single moment and knowing how powerful we are. So, thanks for giving me the platform to share my uh, ramblings with you this morning. So I'm just going to leave you with that.